did talk about, you know, some interesting characteristics of some of these surfaces, but, you know, it's the kind of thing where at, at that moment in time, you may not have realized how important it was. And so you kind of dismiss it as, oh, this is a fun fact of the day territory, but really it was actually really super important, All right? So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna just create the um, or, or GeoGebra with sliders to represent each of these functions, or I'm sorry, each of these equations. And then you're gonna manipulate the sliders to tell me what each of these control values do, the X sub O, Y sub O, D sub O, in the case of the ellipsoid, B sub X, Y, B sub Y, and B sub D. Same idea with hyperboloids and paraboloids, right? So I'll just take you through very quickly. I'll do the sphere with you. Of course, that's the easy one. So I'm reserving the right to do that myself. Um, it is sort of copy pasteable, not if you go through the, if you just leave it in this view, but if you do it in, uh, if you download the PDF, you can copy paste it a little bit into, into GeoGebra. It's just, you're gonna have to modify it a little bit anyway. So let me open a fresh GeoGebra. And like I've been saying for a while now, I just, I just don't like that plane. I prefer the grid. It looks nicer. You, know, you don't have to label the X and Y axes if you don't want, but I think you might find it beneficial in this case when you're trying to describe what's going on. So you go to settings, click on X axis. You can play around with tick marks too if you want, but X axis, label, X, Y axis, label Y, Z axis, label Z, just so you have it all there, all right? And so in this one, we're using subscripts instead of, you know, H, K, things like that. We're using X sub O, Y sub O, Z sub O as the, the measures of the control points in the graph. So all you're gonna do is type X minus X sub O. Oh, I already forgot. Um, I got in the habit of using uh, keyboard shortcuts to, um, to get subscripts and I, what what's happening is I'm getting them confused with uh, getting it confused with Desmos, all right? So you just got to use in this case on the function thing the, that little jammy there. I think I hit it twice. No, I didn't. All right, so zero. I think I did hit it twice actually, but yeah, I got a, another one there. I gotta get rid of that. Let me just make sure it's correct. So, yeah, and then X zero. Okay, yeah, it took a second. Yeah, you, you, you select the icon first and then go from there, All right? Shift six as a shortcut for a power of two. Then if you want, you could try to copy paste it's usually what I do. But then I usually forget that I'm working on a PC and I start hitting command and I just aggravate myself. But you know, you could change your X's to Y's. And your Y's, uh, X for X's and Y's to Z's. And then set the whole thing equal to R squared. Right. When you hit enter, it, it feels like it's not going to do it correctly. It's very uncomfortable, especially with that triangle there, just trying to tell you that you're doing everything wrong, but it is doing it correctly. It's just in this case, you know, when you click out of it, it looks terrible. When you click back into it, it looks right. So it's all good. And when you slide your slider for X of O, you can see what's happening here. But you want to make sure that you're addressing the uh the control points the right way because if you just say it moves along the x-axis i think you're kind of missing the point right because i don't know that this necessarily moves along the x-axis now 
especially if I do it down here. Does that, does that look, by moving this, does that look like it's moving along the x-axis? I mean, maybe parallel to the x-axis, sure. But if you're on zero for x, uh, for y sub o and v sub o, then, then yeah, you could say it moves along the x-axis. But if you change your perspective, so that the x-axis is pointing directly at you. You know, you're talking about forwards and away. You know, it's kind of a little, little wonky, but you get the idea. All right. So what's happening right now is this sphere is centered at zero, zero, zero. So the x value is the x coordinate of the center. The x of O, that is, is the x coordinate of the center. If I move this to one, the new center of the sphere is now one zero zero. So this X sub O, yeah, it, it impacts movement in the X direction, but specifically for the center of the, of the sphere, which in turn drags the rest of the sphere along with it. So you can, it's hard to see, but right smack dab in the middle, you can see that there's a little point there. I mean, it's a, it's a tick mark on the graph, but it might as well serve as a center. It, it looks very much like it's at two zero zero. All right, so if your explanation for this part of it doesn't involve center for X sub O, Y sub O, D sub O, I feel like you're missing the point, and then therefore you're really going to miss some points. All right, now the R value, well, let's see, even negative R values make sense in this context, but let's, let's make it something like two. Or 1.9, how about that, right? So it looks like, you know, just taking a quick top-down view, if I can get it to fit right, it looks like that represents the radius of the, of the sphere, right? So that's a nice easy one for a couple of reasons. One, it's the letter R, so odds are it's the radius, but also even if it, even if it didn't spell it out for you, it's pretty clear. Now, the one thing that you'd have to account for is, okay, well, what's the story with the negative Rs, right? Well, negative Rs also impact the radius of the sphere. So whether it's positive or negative, it's still gonna give you the radius of the sphere and that needs to be in your explanation, All right? So we wanna address this in every possible way, All right? Then you have, like I said, the ellipse, now, if you're careful with the way you do it, you should be able to modify your sphere equation graph to, to account for an ellipse. The way I recommend doing that is to save this, you know, call it, uh, call it sphere. Make sure it's on save, because you know, uh, it, it happens, and it's not just this class, but it happens in all my classes where people have it on private, I guess, because they don't want to be judged by the community that like the, the really harsh mathematical community in GeoGebra, it, like nobody's really looking at your stuff that way. But yeah, put it on shared before you save it. Otherwise, I can't open. It. All right. So then save it. And then immediately save it again as the thing that you want to work on so that you accidentally don't overwrite the file with the, the, the edits that you're about to make, right? So when you look at this, you say, okay, well, I want this to be over, uh, I think it was BX squared. I think that's the notation I use. So you make it a fraction, bring up your, your jammy jammy here. You know, it gets in the way, it's annoying, but it is what it is, you know, so it's the best we got for free and then square it. All right, so that's a BX squared. And we're gonna do the same thing just with a subscript of Y. And again, you're gonna get errors along the way. It's gonna make you think you're doing everything wrong until you hit enter at which point you'll see that you're doing everything right, as long as you know, as long as you actually are doing it. Right. So, pop that in. 
and the right hand side no longer r squared. All right, so you can take a look back to the model. You see we're setting it equal to one, just like we would for an ellipse. So ellipse, ellipsoid, they have a lot of uh, similarities. Right? So we want this to be equal to not an R squared, but we want it to be equal to a one. Hit enter. And okay, so that didn't work. That sucks. All right. So if that happens, it worked the last time we did it. That's why I explained it that way. All right. Then what you do is you, you got to type it in again, but this time from unfortunately from scratch really. So X minus X sub O, but then you could still use the copy paste function. Okay, so All right, so you get your first fraction in and copy the whole thing. And then all the X's become Y's. It's painstaking. But you get it. Oh, control. Oh, I wanted to do control Z and it won't let me. So I'm going to. Plus, try that again, shall we? Without the oops. All right, so then with a Z. And then equals one before you do anything, you copy it just to make sure it's in and you have your subscripts there, but just copy it like I didn't do before. And it'll automatically throw in the new sliders. I don't need the R anymore, but if you leave it there, that's fine too. But if you wanna take it out, you can also, it's not gonna impact anything. But everything you need is there. And so now you can start thinking about what these sliders control. All right. So, you know, you manipulate these bad boys. Okay. It locked on me because I, this is just being difficult, but you save it, refresh it. You know how it is with GeoGebra. It gets a little weird. But once I hit save, now I can see that it's creating an ellipsoid. These B, Y values control something. It seems to control something in terms of maybe the length of an axis, if you will. All right. So this seems to be along the lines of what it was for the ellipse. I'm sorry, the circle. But these seem to be taught seem to be talking about, yeah, you can say the width of it, but that's an oversimplification. All right. So what is it the width of? You do a top-down view. So you're looking at a three-dimensional figure in two dimensions. This seems to be talking about the width, but if you think about an ellipse, you might be thinking about the major and minor axes. All right, that might be what's going on here. And you also have, you know, it's doing nothing, the Z thing. Well, no, it's because we're not looking at it the right way. You go this way, you can see it's controlling something and you've got to figure out what that is. But now you have the applet and it's just a matter of playing around with it and seeing what you can come up with. Okay. I'm looking for your words. Yes, using correct vocabulary, but I absolutely definitely do not want to see any copy paste jobs from some textbook because you go to a textbook, you can find out what every one of these values mean. I want to hear it in your words. All right. So that's all on that. All right. So let me stop the recording.